Hello everyone, uh, good morning and, and thank you for joining us to take a look at Seamless Work-Based Learning, uh, which is a new tool designed to help you manage your work-based learning and advisory board activities. I'm your host, uh, Brett Pulaski with NC3T, and I'm joined today by Amber Ross and Candace Dickover, also of NC3T, who will be helping to manage the walkthrough. Before we get started, uh, I wanted to spend a moment on a few technical notes. There are two options for sound, computer speakers and telephone and you can use the button on the right to switch if you need to. We have all participants on mute to minimize background noise. And we will have a question and answer period at the end of the session. So uh, please feel free to type in your questions into the questions field on the right side of your screen as we go, and we'll address all questions at the end. If you have technical difficulties, you can use the chat area to talk with Amber and Candace in order to see if we can resolve your problem in some way. Okay, so before we get into the walkthrough of Seamless, um, I'd like to start by sharing a bit of background on the company behind Seamless and the development of the product. Seamless Work-Based Learning was created by the National Center for College and Career Transitions. It's an organization that I co-founded with my partner, Hans Meter. Our focus since launch has been on career-connected learning, which is built into our mission statement, which you see here. Every learner with a dream and a plan in every community with a capable and ready workforce. Over the past several years, we've pursued that mission by producing resources like Hans Meter's latest book, The Power and Promise of Pathways, as well as professional development, community coaching, and technical assistance to states, districts, and others. My role within C3T has always been focused on employer engagement. In fact, I've been working in this field for about 20 years now. Uh, which has included consulting, training, and the development of, of several resources. I was the lead author of the Employer Engagement Toolkit, uh, co-authored Building Advisory Boards That Matter with my partner, Hans, and I've written guides for various state departments of education on advisory boards, employer engagement, and registered apprenticeships, among others. And I mention all that just to note that I have a deep commitment to work-based learning. And as the lead developer of Seamless, I'm committed to make it the resource that I know practitioners need in order to do the best job that they can. Seamless work-based learning is intended to serve as your virtual assistant in order to make work-based learning as easy and as fast as possible. Because we all know that work-based learning is an incredibly powerful strategy for student engagement and preparation, but the reality is, is that it's very time intensive and there's not a lot of information out there on how to do it well. Seamless was created to change that. Our goal with Seamless, as you can see here, is to help you find new partners, to manage the partners that you already have, to set up and manage work-based learning experiences, to run a strong advisory board, and to easily keep track of your work-based learning activity. Now, Seamless has been in development for the past several months, and it launches March 1st, followed quickly by a phase two in July. The product offers a great deal of value right out of the gate, but it has some limitations. Uh, it only supports more basic kinds of work-based learning, for example, whereas the July release will expand to cover more involved models like co-ops and internships. And we'll explain some of those differences as we go through the demo. So the question would be, why sign up now versus waiting until July? Well, it's because you won't lose anything by signing up early. We're offering people who sign up early up to four free months added to their annual term and for those who sign up before April 1st, you'll get 20% off the price as well. And we'll go through the specifics of pricing and, and these incentives at the end. So let's take a look at Seamless. And just give me a second while I switch out of PowerPoint and into Seamless. So I should also note that, that while we're looking at this through a computer, Seamless is a browser-based system, which means you can do all of this on your phone as well. There's nothing to download. It's all online. Uh, you know, in fact, you could pull this up while you're sitting in a partner's office on your phone and set activities and look at reports together if you wanted to. So you'll notice that I have two tabs here. Um, one is to show you what the educator sees, and the other is to show the administrator's view. And we'll go back and forth a couple times so you can see how some of the features work. And before we actually do any work, uh, let me just show you this educator's portal, which is what we're looking at now because that will serve as sort of a quick reference to the system. You can see here on the left-hand column that we have 
the employer search, a place to find new partners. We have my partners, which is where you can manage your current partners. We have partner activities, which is where you set up and manage all of your work-based learning uh, activities. We have general resources, which is a full suite of work-based learning and advisory board templates that you can download, customize, and re-upload and use as your own. We have the advisory boards area where you set up and manage your advisory boards, of course. And we have the reports area where you can generate reports on any of your activities by educator, uh, by type of work-based learning, and we'll look at those as well. Finally, we have the knowledge base, which is not only how to use Seamless, but it's also some foundational training and partnership development, such as how to find new partners, how to set goals for advisory boards, things like that. So we'll look at a few things today. We'll look at um, opportunities in the employer search area. We'll review partner details and activities. We'll look at uh, the actual partnership activities. We'll look at how advisory board meetings are set up, and we'll look at the reports as well. So we'll start with the employer search, and for this we will go over to the school administrator area. And we can look at the employer directory. Now this is one of the areas where there's a difference between the March launch and the July launch of, of the additional phases. For the March launch, uh, the administrators will need to enter information on the partners who wish to be um, found in the search area. In July, we'll have the additional capacity to just send your partners links, let them log in, upload their own materials, um, identify what sorts of partnership activities they want to participate in, and manage that on their own. So that's just an example of how we go from basic to more fully featured uh, going from March to um, July. So we'll look here at one of the employers in the uh, employer search area. We'll look at Walmart, for example. And you can see that we've got basic information on the company, um, industry sector, uh, based on the career clusters, of course, contact information, the, the primary contact for work-based learning, a description of the company, uh, also an opportunity to upload documents that people can see, if you've got a company brochure or something like that, and an area to list the opportunities that an employer is willing to do with their local schools. So for example, you know, Walmart will say, well, we're willing to have people come in as guest speakers, for example, and here they can talk about, we're willing to do this on Mondays and Fridays. We have people from, uh, from the finance office who are willing to do this specifically and just offer the details so they get quality um, inquiries from the educators who look at the listing. If you look over the educator side, we can see the employer search area. Well, okay, here we go. Um, so you can see, for example, a list of employers, and I'm gonna to try to move this little go to meeting uh, command board so you can see over on the, or so I can see on the right hand side, the various search criteria. So you can search for employers by industry sector. If you know the name of the contact, if you're looking for people in a particular city, um, and that sort of thing. So we'll look here at Walmart and say that this is one of the companies that um, that pulled up in my search. I can find their information, the document they uploaded, who my primary contact at Walmart is, and a list of all the things that they're willing to do. Again, once we get into July and your employers are able to manage this on their own, this is something they can update on real time. So maybe they take interns in the spring, but not in the fall, they can post that opportunity in the spring and take it down once they found an intern and not post it again until they're ready to take more interns. So it allows them to only take inquiries for the things that they're willing to do. Okay, so why don't we look at um, looking at your current list of partners. And the reason we have this broken up this way, where we have a pub public search area for employers and every educator has their own private list is because Sometimes you have a partner who only wants to work with a particular teacher and you want to respect that, um, that relationship. Sometimes you have partners who do work with current educators, but also have a lot of additional opportunities that they want to share publicly. So we allow every employer to decide where they want to be, and we allow every educator to decide if they want to share their, their, their own, their proprietary list of partners with other people. And so we'll actually look at that here. So we'll look at Walmart again, um, 
and you can see here at the bottom in terms of sharing that if this is my partner, I can I can choose to share this with other educators if I choose, any or all. I can also post this to that school-wide employer search area, but I certainly don't have to. So as I look at Walmart, I can see that um, I've got the contact information. I actually work with multiple people at this company, so I can identify all the people I work with along uh, with determining who the primary contact is. If I want to see what I've done with Walmart in the past or what I've got coming up, I can look at their list of partnership activities. And here you can see all the things that they've done with me. With me. Um, I can sort them by activity type, um, a calendar sort, um, the status, if these are complete, if they are current, if they're tentative. And I can also go back and look at individual people. So, for example, let's look at Riley Allwood here. Well, actually, Isabella Blue. My apologies, bad click. Um, but you can see that, that this person serves on three different advisory boards for me. And here's the roles and the end of the terms. And if I look at the list of, list of activities, here are all the things that this individual has done with me. So it's very easy to keep track of what all of your partners have done with you uh, and what you're planning to do in the future. So we'll look next at setting up partnership activities. And here, as an educator, I'm looking at the list of activities that I've either done in the past or I've got coming up. It will click into one of these um, individually. And so this is a guest speaker opportunity. And so you can see what we give it the activity name. We identify the type it is. And you can see here that we have four different types of work-based learning activities with the March launch guest speakers, site visits or company tours, job shadows and panels or mock interviews. Uh, the first three are for single employers. The last, the panels are for multiple employers and you can manage those all through here. What happens in July is we bring in uh, career mentors, project mentors, co-ops, externships and internships. And the reason that it's taking us longer to develop those is the four here are all single date activities. So you know, you're know you gonna have a guest speaker come in once, that's what this record is for. When you're talking about an internship or you know a project mentor or career mentor or something like that, those are multi-day uh, with multi, multiple you know scheduled uh, calendar items. It, it's a much more complicated type of partnership activity, but we will be able to accommodate that starting in July. The other big difference between March and July is that in March, the educator is the only one who has access to this. But in July, for individual activities, when you assign a business partner and a student, they will each have their own ability to log in and post documents and, and post reviews and that sort of thing. So you will have an opportunity for your people to log in directly to uh, post evaluations, to post signed uh, internship agreements, uh, you know, training plans, things like that. So you will have all parties able to log into the system for each individual activity that they're assigned to. But for now, why don't we look at this guest speaker activity and we can see that we're here putting the, the time, date and location of the activity. We're putting the activity description and the objectives here along with which students we're working with. So this might be 30 students in your engineering class, for example. And the reason we're putting all this here is because this is all going to be sent to your partner as an invitation and it doesn't become a live activity until they've approved it. So that's why you're sharing all this detail on what the activity is because you're telling them what exactly they're getting involved in. You can also see over here on the right hand side that we can send a calendar invitation so it'll, they can post it to Outlook or Google and what have you. Um, that includes an, a reminder email maybe three days prior to the event. We can send a follow-up survey. How happy were you with this activity? What could, we do, what could we do better? Things like that. We can also send documents. And this is where I was talking about the resources previously. So you can have an entire library of your partnership documents. And you can decide you know, which materials it is that you want to send to your partner. And I'll show you a couple examples of that. Because again, we will have a full suite of templates that you, you will be able to review, uh, download, 
customize and then upload to use as your own. So this, for example, is a, a template for job shadowing for student evaluations. And this is a template from the advisory board section for meeting minutes. And of course, for advisory boards, we'll have templates for bylaws, agendas, uh, welcome letters, termination letters, all, everything you need to run a, a strong advisory board. We'll have templates for. But these are just a couple examples of some of the templates that are going to be available in the system. And of course, once you uh, complete the activity, you're going to want to log in and post your uh, partner's volunteer hours, which is going to be one of the questions on the follow-up survey. And again, once we hit July, volunteers will be able to log in and post this themselves. But for now, there's just an area for you to post that. Okay, we talked briefly about general resources, so why don't we just jump right into advisory boards. And we can see that educators can run multiple advisory boards because some people do run advisory boards for more than one program. They may have a, an advisory board for a single program, but then one also for maybe a school-wide business committee. But you can run multiple boards. And we can go in and see what one of the boards looks like. We can see the multiple people who are uh, serving on the board with their contact information, when their term is up, what type of partner they are, or sorry, what type of advisory board member they are, whether they're an employer, a business coalition, you know, one of your chamber uh, representatives, something like that, and what the role is on the advisory board, whether they're chair, vice chair, general board member, uh, that sort of thing. We can see here, of course, that there is a calendar of upcoming activities for the board, which includes not only board activities, but also work-based learning activities, so they're aware of what's happening. And we have a catalog of board activities where we can see the various meetings and that sort of thing. So we'll actually go in and look at one of the meetings. Sorry, things are a little slow on my end. Why don't we just, there we go. Okay, uh, we'll look at setting up an advisory board meeting so we can decide what the meeting is going to be called. It could be your spring meeting. We identify the time, date, and location down here at the bottom. We say if this is a board meeting, executive board meeting, if we want everybody at graduation, if there's maybe a meet the partners sort of public event, and we decide who's going to be invited. So we can say this is just for the executive committee and those people are checked off. If we want to modify and we say, well, I want these two people to come as well, we can do that. We can also post the agenda because you can see that uh, we're going to be sending this out to members as an invitation to the meeting. You can also send out documents. Uh, if, you've, if you have things that people need to review prior to the meeting, you can send those out. And after the meeting is over, you can go in and upload your minutes and your sign-in sheets. So whenever you're required to report on advisory board activity, uh, by your state DOE, whether it's every year, every five years, what have you, you can easily access all of the materials from past meetings. Another difference between March and July in terms of the development of Seamless is that in March, this again is all educator driven. In July, all of your advisory board members will have an, op an access to log in themselves, to look at meeting minutes, to look at founding documents like bylaws and, and that sort of thing. We'll also have um, an ability to run subcommittees and task forces as well through Seamless for the advisory reports. And finally, we will look at the reports. So as an individual educator, I want to be able to see what I've been doing um, over the past few months. And you can see over here on the right, you can search by various criteria. You can say, I only want to look at uh, the work I've done with this company. I only want to look at the guest speaking work that I've done. I only want to work at, at this specific time frame. And you can see that you can generate a report showing who you've worked with, what you've done with them, and how many students you've served. We can also look at a partner activity report. So I want to look, search by partner to see all the things I've done with every contact um, what activities they've done, how many volunteer hours they've um, committed, and the total hours that each individual has uh, supported my program with. 
if we go back over to the school administrator account, we can see that there's also a school activity report. So I can look and see what every educator has done using those same uh, searchable criteria. I want to see what my educators have done between July and October, for example. Or I just want to see what people have done with uh, guest speaking. And you can see also up here, and this is true for the educator portal as well, you can either print this report or you can export it as a CSV file, which is an Excel file. So if you wanted to export this and drop it into your own template or use it in some other way to share out across your, uh, your audiences, you can do that. Once we get to July, there's going to be several additional reports. You saw that the educators were able to report by number of students reached, uh, number of volunteer hours, but there are going to be other criteria, maybe by career cluster, for example, uh, by type of work-based learning. There's a lot of different other types of reports that we can generate with this. And just as you see that the school administrator can see everything happening with the educators, if you have a multi multiple site license, your district people can see reports by school. And with, with the March launch, it's going to be looking school by school, but starting in July, they'll be able to do reports on multiple schools simultaneously. So I'm going to go back to the PowerPoint. and show you the pricing, which is everybody's first question usually. Um, this is a school-wide license. So if your school license is seamless, you get unlimited access for an entire year. As many educators as the school that want to use it can. You can have as many work-based learning activities in there, as many partners represented. It's unlimited use uh, within the school. Pricing is based on the total number of students at the school, not just those students participating in work-based learning. So if you've got maybe a comprehensive high school where you've got 2,000 students um, overall, but only 300 in, in career and technical education or doing work-based learning, you would still be looking at the 2,000 students pricing. Now, as I mentioned previously, we do have discounts for those who adopt early. So we're talking about a 20% discount off these numbers which hopefully everyone feels is reasonable. Uh, <laughs> we, we do. And let's see. We also have opportunities for uh, individual subscriptions because one of the things we heard when we were at the ACTE Vision Conference, we had several district-level work-based learning coordinators come up and ask us, well, I work with 20 kids across the district on internships, but I'm the only one who would be using the system and it doesn't make sense for me to buy licenses for five schools if I'm the only one using the system for a handful of students. So this is our attempt to address that scenario. So if you're an individual and you're the only one who needs access to it, that would be a $500, $500 a year charge. We also have the opportunity to offer multiple site um, licenses. So somebody at a district could oversee seamless for every school in their district or just their high schools. Uh, you decide which schools it would uh, represent. If you're with a state department of education, you could do this for the entire state. It could be customized to your state, your, your branding, your language, that sort of thing. And it would be very powerful, I would think, to be able to sitting in the state office and be able to get real time reports on all the work based learning activities happening across the state. And this sort of um, agreement is, is very customizable, so that's something that we would need to talk with individually to make sure that it's not cost prohibitive and that we're serving you in the way that we, need, we would need to. So that's something that we would talk about um, individually. So the next steps from this presentation, one is that we'll be sending additional information to you this week, including a list of all the features of Seamless, a breakdown of the difference between the March launch and the July expansion. The full seamless website will be up on January 15th, so in just about a week, with the, the pricing, the about information, um, demo videos, that sort of thing. We will be able to start accepting orders on February 1st for the March launch, and then seamless launches um, in its first iteration on March 1st. I know that we have, hopefully we have some questions here. Um, if you have a question that doesn't get addressed today or if you have something that comes to mind later, 
My contact information is here, brad at nc3t.com. Here's my phone number. This information is also on the nc3t.com website um, and also on the seamlesswbl.com website, which is sort of a placeholder right now, but will very soon be uh, fully featured. So I'm going to ask uh, Candace and Amber if they're able to um, share any questions out for discussion. Candace, Amber, you guys with us? Hi, yes. Brett, can you hear me now? Yes, I can hear you. Great. Okay, great. So we'll start with the first question, and it says, even if the teacher keeps their partners private, can the administrator still see the employers that the teacher is working with? They will be able to see them through the reports because the administrators will be able to see who you've worked with on the various work-based learning activities but that will not include contact information. So it won't have email address, it won't have phone numbers or anything like that. But the employer contact will be visible in the report. Okay, perfect, thank you. Our next question is, can you export the calendar of work-based learning events to print out or share with others? That is a really good question. Um, let me see. I love the questions I don't have the answers to. Let me see what we have. <laughs> no problem. Yep, I don't see that we can export those, but one of the good things about our developers is that they're very responsive. So that is a question, even if we don't have that at launch, we could certainly have that in July 1st, and I'm going to make a note to do that. I mean, you, you can export things you've done in the past through the reporting function. That does have the... Um, the printing and exporting functions. But to export from here, from the list of partnership activities, uh, we had not thought about that, but we can easily do that by July. The other thing, uh, before we move on to the next question, because th this spurs a thought, when we look at the employer search, also in July, you will be able to export all of the opportunities that employers have listed. This, this is still something that we're going to run through the educators. Uh, we've had people ask, will students have access to a portal to look at all the opportunities. That's not going to happen right away because we want educators to have a certain level of control over this. We don't want industry partners to get too many inquiries. We want it to be sort of filtered through the educators. But we are looking at maybe in phase three, maybe around November or December, to think about what a student portal would look like for those uh, public employer opportunities. So it, it's a thought, but um, we're not there yet. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the thorough answer, Brett. <laughs> um, so our next question is, is there language translation capability? You know, that, that we had that question, I think, twice when we were in San Antonio at the Vision Conference. We've had people ask if there will be a uh, Spanish version of this. We don't have plans for that yet, but it is on our radar. So I would, I would peg that and maybe a phase three activity as well. And I'm going to make a note that, um, that there was some interest in that. Perfect. Thank you. So our next question, we have a few more. Our next question is linkages with an online career information and systems possible? That is something, yeah, we, we've really um, wrestled with that without coming to a solution. Because right now we want to get a fully featured system uh, out on the market. But we have talked to some of the people at State Departments of Education to see could this information be integrated with student records, for example. Um, we're still trying to figure that out. I, I think it's possible. I think it's, it's much easier in terms of data security for us to export information into a student information system. I think it's much more complicated in terms of privacy for us to import information from a state information system. Uh, and I'm sure that there's going to be some you know, vendor certifications and things like that that we'll have to work through to make that happen. So um, the answer is not yet, but um, it, it's something that we are thinking about and exploring and would like to make happen because I, I certainly see the value. And I've actually talked to several people from uh, various states that have said we're incorporating work-based learning activity into student 
performance records, and I would love to find a way for this system to support that. Perfect. Thank you. So our next question is, is seamless web-based learning able to be integrated into Google Calendar? Um, I think that's probably going to fall into the same development phase as the exports uh, of the, uh, the work-based learning activity. I can show you on the dashboard that we do have a calendar. I'm sorry if I've got a... I've got a little, like a big go to meeting panel that I've got to move around so I can see everything. But you can see that we do have an activities calendar that all the partnership activity feeds into. And they're actually color coded by type of activity. Um, we can print this. We have not talked about an export function. It shouldn't be hard to do. And I say that as a non developer. Um, I, can, I can talk to the developers to see what it would take to export that. I guess, I guess the research we need to do is to see what sort of uh, import formats school calendars require. But that should not be too difficult. So I'll ask the developers about exporting the calendars, because I think that's a very good idea. Perfect. Thank you. So our next question is, can existing info be uploaded into the system? It can. Um, at first, um, we will have to work with the developers to do that, but they are also building a portal that will allow us to very easily import all of your current activities and all of your current contacts into the system. So we can do it on a case-by-case -case basis. If you get a lot of, uh, of data starting in March, we can do that, but it's going to be much, much easier and much quicker and more fluid uh, maybe two months after that. So that is that is on the board. Perfect. Thank you. Next is, are you working with any states yet? What is your largest partner? We have had initial talks with states, uh, and I don't want to uh, share any details yet because, you know, they're, they're very early talks. But we have had some interest with a few states. I think they want to see this come, up, come to launch and see real-time usage. But uh, I think there's some very real potential to develop a handful of state portals based on some initial conversations. Perfect. Next, we have, are the types of opportunities listed customizable to the district's terminology? That's an interesting question. Um, not yet, because we, we, we needed to standardize uh, to a large part in order to get all the coding very systematic. I can find out from the developers what the opportunities are to do that. I mean, certainly if you were to have a larger district or, or a state, we can customize that sort of thing completely because it would be basically uh, sort of a clone of this system. And we could change the terminology to whatever terminology the state or the, or the larger district or the region uh, wanted to use, along with the branding and, and other uh, customizable areas. But right off the bat for Seamless, it's going to be pretty standardized. But we're open to looking at that in the future. Perfect. Thank you. Our next one is, I noticed that several of the drop-down selections don't have an other option. Can that be added? It, I think it depends on what area. Yeah, I suppose it, it would be very easy to add in certain areas. When you, when you talk about partnership activities, and I'll, I'll give you an example here. Um, so this, for example, the guest speakers have you know, a certain number of questions. Activity description, activity objectives, number of students, student details. If we change that to a site visit or company tour, we get an additional field where we have to offer transportation details. So when we send the invitation to the partner, it's very clear who's covering transportation. And especially once we get into internships, externships, uh, project mentoring, things like that, there will be several additional custom fields. So I think the challenge with offering that other category is what fields would need to be included in order to accommodate the particular type of uh, activity. I think what might be helpful, and again, I mean, 
we're, we're taking a very collaborative approach to the development of this product. So if there are people listening now or, you know, in the future or if something comes to mind and you've got a work-based learning activity that does not fit here, if you want to contact us and let us know what it is, I think that the optimal solution would be for us to incorporate that as a selectable activity because then it can be customized specifically to the characteristics of that activity. Perfect. Thank you. Our next question is, our district will have questions as to whether the system can be locked down so our students' information does not go outside the district. Can you just speak to that to clarify that? Yep, I can. So, at least in the first phase, there is no identifiable student information in the system. Once we get into the more sophisticated forms of work-based learning, such as internships, where you've got an individual student who's able to log in, there will be a student name and an email address, but there will be no, you know, proprietary information. There will be no student ID, no social security number, anything like that. So we want to, you know, be as tight as possible on making sure that no student information, uh, identifiable information, gets into the system in the first place. So that's the first level of security. The The data is um, encrypted. It's a HTTPS system. It's a 256-bit encrypted while in transit. Uh, the system does sit behind an application level firewall. Um, it, it, it's proven to, that the technology is proven to resist malicious attacks. There is um, weekly backup of the data, so the data is going to be secure as well. And um, that's, that's about all I can say about the security. Well, we're trying to prevent any issues by making sure that as little student information as possible is in the system in the first place. Great, thank you. So next we have, can we export the contact list? I believe we have that as a capability right off the bat, but why don't we take a look? We do not have that as an opportunity right off the bat, but I know it's scheduled for phase two. And I think we might have talked about like a very early addition to uh, phase one. So yes, that's defi definitely going to be possible by phase two. Um, and I can ask how quickly it could be done for phase one. Perfect. Thank you. Next we have, we use a system called Career Explorer by Headed2. As Brett is talking about right now, we will want some of this information to be exported into the program because it is where our students connect to web-based learning. Will that be something that team was able to work with had it to on? We would be happy to talk with the developers of any other system about integrating these features with the things that they're doing. So if you have a contact at one of these other companies, another system that you work with, we would love to talk with them and find a way to build some sort of a portal or interface to make sure you're not having to put information in twice and that all of the information you need is available through a single source. Thank you. Next, we have document a question about document uploads. Can you please give examples, PowerPoint presentations, employment, or work-based learning info? I'm not sure I understand the question. Can, can we offer examples oh. of, I'm sorry. Can you read it again? No problem, <laughs> yes. Um, please give examples, PowerPoint presentations, employment, or work-based learning info. Um, I'm, I'm not understanding the question entirely. I, I can tell you that uh, the, the types of information you upload, uh, it, it's whatever you feel uh, is appropriate to share with employers and students. So that can be not only uh, work-based learning forms and advisory board forms, such as you know student evaluations, uh, you know, work plans, uh, advisory board bylaws, that sort of thing, but also sort of the promotional materials on here's information on our program. You can certainly upload that. Um, tip sheets for guest speakers, tip sheets for hosting a, a strong site visit, things like that. 
we will have those sorts of materials available, the tip sheets and, and training materials. Um, and we do have a full complement already of the sort of the working materials, the, the student evaluations, the advisory board documents, things like that, uh, you know, parent waivers, things like that. Uh, we don't have sort of promotional material templates yet, but that is something we can add to the list, and I think it's certainly appropriate for us to include that as a resource um, for people using the system. I, I, hope, I hope I answered that question. I was going to say, if um, you feel like your question wasn't answered or you need a little more clarification, please just feel free to add another question to the question box. Yep. And again, it's uh, Brett at nc3t.com. If, um, if we don't get to your question or uh, I've not answered it completely, feel free to follow up. I'll, I'll be happy to, uh, to do a better job. Perfect. So we have a few more questions left. So. Okay. The next one is, I may have missed this, but are educators and administrators the only people who work in Seamless, or is there an opportunity for students to use it as well? Right off the bat, it is educators and administrators. Starting in July, you can invite industry partners and students to participate in specific work-based learning activity records. So say that you set up an internship in July, you invite your industry partner, you invite your student, they both will have access to that specific event so they can look at documents, they can upload evaluations, um, maybe log work hours, things like that. So they will have access to the things that you invite them to. The, the only additional area that employers will have access to is the employer search. Once you give them a login in, uh, starting in July, they will be able to log in, keep information on their company current, and modify as they see fit the types of work-based learning activities that they're willing to support. Thank you, Brett. Next we have, um, who houses the system? The system is hosted on AWS, the Amazon Web Services system. It is, and I've got information from the developers here because I'm not your, uh, <laughs> I'm not your tech person. Um, but the note from the developer says that they are using PHP as the server-side scripting language, and MySQL as the database on a Linux server. So okay, again, hooked it on AWS with full security. Okay, our next question is, will embedding real-time labor market data be a feature? Wow, <laughs> that's, a good, that's, that's a good question. Um, not not as of July. I think it's a fascinating idea, and I think it would speak to a, a more fully featured system. So I would peg something like that as um, it's like a phase three or maybe even a phase four um, feature. I, I, I love the idea. I would love to find a way to incorporate that because that would be valuable. We don't have plans for that yet, but that will be, as of now, on our consideration list. All right, we're down to our last two questions. Okay. So the next one is, will the hours committed be reported by employee and employer? For every partnership activity, the individual who participated will be, will be asked um, initially for their volunteer hours. And, you know, once we get into July, they can log in their, on their own they will be able to post that information themselves. We will be able to run reports on volunteer hours, and I think we actually showed that um, the partner activity report. So we can see volunteer hours by employee. And so we will be able to report on volunteer hours, um, not only by individual, but also by total. Which, for, I mean, for those of you who do grant work, for example, uh, volunteer hours and, and the associated value, that's an in-kind contribution. So we, we certainly recognize the value of, of tracking that information. Perfect. Thank you. So we have a few more questions popping in, so a little more than two. Okay. Um, our next question is, with the student site access launch, will they be able to search opportunities for job shadows, youth appearances, or co-ops? That is... Um, probably down the road because uh, as I was mentioning with the uh, 
the employer search, we want that we want the educators to be sort of a filter for that to limit the the number of inquiries that employers get. And also, so educators maintain a firm hand in selecting which students are not only interested but prepared. So we don't have direct student access to that. We will be able to export those options, and teachers can share those out as they see fit. But it will still be the the, the teacher will still be uh, the point of contact and the key filter for that. Perfect. Thank you, Brett. Okay, so next we have, is there a way to track monetary donations from organizations? We do not have that. Uh, there, There is no, no finance component to this yet. It's an interesting idea because, I mean, for this, we were looking primarily at work-based learning and um, advisory boards. There are systems out there that the National School Foundation Association links to for financial management. Uh, we, we don't have that yet, but I'm going to make a note and see if that would be something appropriate for the system. Perfect. Next, we have the question about real-time labor market data does not seem to me to be what this platform is about. That's what we're using Career Explorer tool for. We're looking for seamless for the tracking capability. Okay, and, and that, that's a fair point. Um, I, I could see the potential for tie-ins at some point, and, and again, I mean, it's it's not something that we're addressing right now. I, I, I do get excited about the potential to feed that information into um, opportunities, for example. So again, it's not it's not on our radar right now, but I really like the potential value that it could bring to the system. But I, I agree. I mean, for for this to succeed, we have got to master our core areas before we look at additions, and that's what we're focused on right now. Thank you. Thanks for speaking to the potential of it all. Um, the very last question is, will you be sending out a copy of this PowerPoint? Uh, we certainly can. Um, we'll also be sending out additional information on sort of the full set of features that are going to be available at launch, uh, as well as phase two, so you can get sort of a side-by-side -side comparison. So we'll We'll have some of that, but I can certainly make the PowerPoint available. We just actually have one last <laughs> okay. to sign us up. Okay. Sign us up. Uninfied in Wisconsin is in. Could you read the question again? I missed it. Yeah, it was more of a, a statement and excitement of sign us up. I seen Uninfied in Wisconsin is in. Excellent. Good. You guys can be among the first. <laughs> and that is all we have from the question feature. All right. Well, well thank you, everyone, for, for sticking with us for the entire presentation and the Q&A. As I mentioned, we're going to be sending out additional information in the next few days, and we will keep you on the loop on developments and when the system is ready for, for sign-ups.